Hello students, in today's class we are going to discuss about block on block problems, okay? particularly multiple blocks with friction in between them. Okay? Let us see what exactly this is and how to solve the problems given in this concept. Okay? So, block on block with friction. Okay? So, what is a block on block? In mechanics, a block on block basically represents some blocks that is two or more than two blocks stacked on each other. Okay? As an example, you can think of this. So, there are two blocks with masses M and capital M. Okay? And we push or pull them okay, to initiate motion. Okay? We have say uh, done some problems where you have some friction between the upper block and the lower block, but the ground is smooth. Okay? And maybe we apply force on the lower block or it's the same condition where you have say some friction and ground is smooth with force applied on the upper block. Okay? So, here with this kind of say uh, problems or in this kind of problems, okay, we know this F must be less than or equal to mu times M plus capital M into G okay, for this system for no slipping. Okay? Whereas, if I apply a force F here, that force must be less than mu times small m upon capital M into small m plus capital M into G. Okay? So, this basically is only valid when the ground is smooth. Okay? But here in this say class, we are going to discuss about the problems where ground is also rough. Okay? Let us look at the example. So, we have two blocks, a 2 kg block and 3 kg block placed on each other. The ground has a coefficient of friction 0 0.2 with the block of 3 kg and 2 kg block experiences a coefficient of friction which is 0 0.3 when in contact with 3 kg. Okay? And let us say we apply a force F. Okay? Now, the question could be say something like, what is the minimum force required to initiate the motion okay? and what is the maximum force okay? so that there is no slipping. Okay? So, two things say F minimum okay, where motion starts blocks start moving okay and f max where slipping starts okay so let us see how exactly to analyze this kind of situation okay so start with the say free body diagram of the upper block as well as the lower block. Okay? So, when we talk about the lower block capital M, we applied a force F. Okay? We applied a force F and there will be two frictions F1 with respect to ground and let us say the upper block exerts a force F2. Okay? And if we see the small m, the small m must experience F2 in the opposite direction. This is a free body diagram. All right. If there is no movement at all, because friction is trying to oppose the relative motion, the friction initially say starts to gain strength until say it cannot gain any more strength because friction okay, or static friction is limiting in nature, means there is some self adjustment at but that self adjustment is only until an upper limit okay which is given by mu times normal okay and that you can say if i talk about the normals as n1 and n2 and gravity as capital mg 
we can see okay f2 and f1 have their limiting values okay so normal at this point we know is going to be 50 newton and at this point the normal is 20 newton okay so f1 and f2 the limiting values okay f1 with respect to ground must be less than or equal to okay mu times normal so that turns out to be 10 newton okay so you multiply 0 0.2 with 50 and f2 should be less than mu times n 20 into 0 0.3 that is 6 newton okay so these are the limiting values all right now you see if the blocks do not move that is and as long as there is no acceleration okay f2 must be 0 okay if a is equal to 0 okay if a is equal to 0 f2 must be 0 because f2 is the only force acting on small m where small m is 2 kg here okay so small m is 2 kg okay and capital m is 3 kg we can write it here all right so you can see that the friction acting between the two blocks is going to be zero as long as acceleration is zero okay but you know if i write the equation for 3 kg this also if a is equal to zero f2 is equal to zero also leads to the idea that f must be equal to f1 as long as there is no motion there is no acceleration okay and since f1 is less than or equal to 10 newton okay so as long as the applied force is less than 10 newton there is no motion at all all right so that is the basic idea okay so minimum force you can say where the block starts moving is f is equal to 10 newton okay let us say now that the system starts to accelerate okay system starts to accelerate then in that case okay if i say a is not equal to 0 okay then f2 must be equal to okay f2 must be equal to 2a this is again valid okay or if i am saying motion starts but there is no slipping okay this condition is for no slipping okay so f2 must be equal to 2a but we know f2 is less than or equal to 6 newton okay so we see that we have talked about the limiting friction 6 newton so that means acceleration must be less than or equal to 3 meter per second square all right it should be less than or equal to 3 meter per second square so if i talk about the equation of motion that is newton's second law for 3 kg block on 3 kg f was trying to pull friction okay the two frictions f1 and f2 were say opposing f1 or in opposite direction to f1 so since motion starts f1 has to be kinetic in nature and f1 is 10 newton and f2 is self-adjusting so i'll simply write f2 as 2a okay f2 will be 2a and that should be equal to 3 times a mass into acceleration so we see f minus 10 is equal to 5a or a is equal to f by 5 minus 2 but we just have discovered that a should be less than or equal to 3 all right so this gives that f must be less than or equal to 25 newton okay so that means for no slipping f max has to be 25 newton okay so the way of analysis of this kind of problems i hope is understood okay there can be a say stage or a state where say both the blocks are stationary okay and then they start moving together as a system okay if we increase the force further a state will come 
okay, when slipping starts. Okay. So, we can say now for this particular problem as an example that we have taken, okay, for any force less than 10 Newton, okay, the system does not move. Okay. It starts moving when the force exceeds 10 Newton. Okay. But then when the force exceeds 25 Newton, the two blocks starts getting separated. All right. Let us see another problem where we have taken three blocks okay, as an example. All right. So, in continuation with what we have done previously, let us see how to solve this problem. Okay. In this case, we have say a 2 kg block, 3 kg block and 5 kg block. Let us before we start writing things, okay, writing the equations, we try to say put the say uh, limiting frictions. Okay. So, limiting friction here would be mu times normal. Mu is 0 0.3, normal is 20, so this is 6 Newton. Limiting friction at this point would be again mu times normal. Normal is 50 Newton multiplied by 0 0.5, that is this is 25 Newton. And limiting friction here would be equal to mu times normal. Normal would be 2 plus 3 plus 5, 10 kg. So, 10, 100, 100 into 0.2, that is 20 Newton. Okay. So, this basically gives you say a very clear idea how much is the limiting friction at each contact. All right. Now, so let us start say C, say uh, let us start analyzing and write equations. If A is 0, okay. So, if A is 0, we can see everything is at rest. So, on 2 kg, okay, there must be no force. If I draw the free board diagram, okay, of 2 kg, okay, of the 2 kg block, you can see it is at rest. Normal, let us call it N1, Mg, which is 2G, and if I talk about friction, call it F1. And if acceleration is 0, F1 must be equal to 0. All right. The free word diagram of 3 kg. Say you have say a force applied F, okay, a force applied F, then F1 acts in opposite direction, F2 acts in opposite direction, normal and Mg, so 3G and N2 along with N1, okay. So if we write the free word, say equation, okay, for motion, equation of motion for say 3 kg then that should be F minus F2 minus F1, okay, is equal to 0 because acceleration is 0. But F1 itself is 0. That means F must be equal to F2, all right. F must be equal to F2, all right. Then we start, say, with, say, the third block that is the 5 kg. 5 kg experiences two forces, F2 at the upper surface and F3 at the lower surface, okay. F2 being the friction between 3 kg and uh, say 5 kg and F3 being the friction force between the ground and 5 kg, alright. So, we can write F2 minus F3 equal to 0, okay. So, this is the case, but you see this is as long as there is no motion, okay, as long as there is no motion. But when does the motion start, okay, when does the motion start, okay. So, motion starts when limiting friction is breached, okay, when we have something, say a force greater than the limiting friction, all right. Now, for that, okay, for that, if I assume all the three are moving with same acceleration, all the three are moving with same acceleration. So, a1 is equal to A2 is equal to A3. Then we can say there is a single force, okay, or considering system, we can say F minus friction from the ground is equal to say 2 plus 3 plus 5 into A. All right, 2 plus 3 plus 5 into A. This is when A1 equal to A2 equal to A3. Okay, all the three are moving together. Okay, so from this F minus F3 is equal to 10A, okay. And you know, if I say it is just going to start, 
okay that is we have breached the limiting friction of the ground which you can see is 20 newton so if this is greater than 0 okay if i instead of saying equal to 0 i say greater than or equal to 0 then f must be greater than or equal to 20 newton okay f must be greater than 20 newton so acceleration is say uh, so small acceleration is small it's not a very large value okay so the motion has just been initiated so when we apply a force of 20 newton we have breached okay or we have overcome the friction applied by the ground so the motion starts okay but then how long can we sustain okay if we keep increasing the force then the acceleration would also increase but then there is an upper limit what is the upper limit to the acceleration when there is no slipping you see on the 5 kg block in the free body diagram itself we see that there are only two forces when the motion starts f3 becomes equal to the limiting friction which we know is 20 newton so for the 5 kg we can write f2 minus 20 newton that should be equal to 5a all right but f2 should be less than 25 newton okay we have seen that f2 should be less than 25 newton so if i say f2 okay is equal to 20 plus 5a and less than 25 that means a must be less than or equal to 1 meter per second square means so the acceleration cannot be greater than 1 meter per second square okay to say uh, avoid slipping okay or the acceleration cannot be greater than 1 meter per second square if it is greater than 1 meter per second square then slipping will start all right so let us see what is the value of force for that condition okay so if you talk about the value of force okay then we already have seen this equation which talks about say all the three having same accelerations okay substituting the value of a as one so you get f minus f3 f3 when we have reached the limiting friction 20 f minus 20 should be equal to 10 so f max for no slipping should be equal to 30 newton okay so here we are considered the slipping between okay the slipping between say 3 kg okay and 5 kg but it may happen that say the as the blocks accelerate together there may be slipping between 2 kg and 3 kg but for 3 kg Sorry, but for 2 kg okay if we talk about this okay the maximum force is 6 newton and on 2 kg we have only f1 so f1 is equal to ma if i write ma1 okay then a1 since the upper limit is 6 newton m is 2 kg will be less than or equal to 3 meter per second square okay so maximum acceleration of say uh, 2 kg block should be 3 and that happens when slipping starts okay since we cannot have slipping at 1 meter per second square which we have discovered here or which you have found out here okay slipping does not start between 2 kg and 3 kg all right so in this way we have to say follow the simple steps as to where exactly the slipping might start and where exactly the blocks will move together okay and slowly slowly we have to build up the problem all right build up the solution okay. so uh, these are the two examples on the block on block for you i give say an example that you can try at home okay you can try where the force f is not applied at the center but on the blocks the 2 kg or 5 kg okay there is say a task or this is a task for you where you can find out the upper limit and lower limit of the forces so that there is no slipping at any contact okay so i hope say uh, whatever discussions took place in this class were thoroughly understood by you okay all the best keep practicing thank you